It is now my great pleasure to present our speaker this morning. And I know she brings a message which is as beautiful as she is. She is, she is extremely talented, an artist, practitioner, actress, singer, multifaceted, multi-talented. I give you practitioner, Carol Campbell. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful Jamaica, sweet Jamaica. We've been having some lovely cooling rains over the last few days and everything is just lush and green. Welcome to everyone who is joining us on the World Wide Web here in Jamaica and wherever in the world you are. Welcome. This month, October, we have celebrated here in Jamaica Labor Day, National Heroes Day, and I like to think of October as our National Heritage Month. Through the awareness of the sacrifices that have brought us thus far, I think it's time that we recognize that while our past has shaped our present, so too does our present shape our future. We are not at the mercy of our history, good or bad as it may be perceived, but we do have a responsibility to align ourselves with the best of ourselves and standing on the shoulders of those who have set the stage, reach even higher to catch a glimpse of eternity and our role in it. And make no mistake, we each and everyone have a role to play. Why? Because we matter. You matter. And you matter. And you, you matter. Your imprint is impactful. Your essence lingers in the atmosphere. Hopefully, it's like sweet perfume. In the words of Marcus Mosiah Garvey, one of our national heroes, and I quote, God and nature first made us what we are, and then out of our own created genius, we make ourselves what we want to be. Follow always that great law. Let the sky and God be our limit, and eternity our measurement. He also says, the ends you serve that are selfish will take you no further than yourself. But the ends you serve that are for all in common will take you into eternity. And further, this hour, we are stretching forth our hands with a desire to teach the world the true principles of mercy and justice." End quote. So my question today is, at this moment in time, what are the true principles of mercy and justice for you? And just how have we been demonstrating this through our behavior and our interactions? Do you feel obliged to forward every joke that services on the internet, that pokes fun at whichever political candidate is now running for office? It's very tempting, isn't it? <laughs> but does it serve the greater good? There is a Yoruba proverb which says, the beginning of wisdom is knowing who you are. It's not enough to dream of a better circumstance. You create it by being part of the solution. But to do that, you have to know that there is that within you that is primed to establish truth and goodness in the midst of any situation. There's a hero at the heart of us. There's a genius in the mind of us. There is an indefatigable, undeniable spirit that is the soul of us. As young people say, be woke, wake up and live. And incidentally, that is the title of my talk this morning. 
wake up and live. What ideas are you awake to when you consider the twin pillars of mercy and justice? These are inseparable concepts. You know, we refer often to the purpose statement of International Centers for Spiritual Living, creating a world that works for everyone. The truth is, that's the big T truth, struggling thoughts produce struggling results. So if that's where the focus is, guess what? The experience is nothing more, nothing less, than a perfect reflection of your dominant thought patterns. Thoughts generate feelings, which lead to actions, which are demonstrated as results. As Malcolm X said, he reminded us, anger can blind human vision. Hatred, resentment, anger, envy, these all short circuit our good and hold back whatever progress is trying to make an appearance. So it makes sense then that if we want a new experience, we can't entertain old thought patterns. Let's face it, knowing the truth is quite irrelevant if you don't act on it. That's kind of silly, right? If mercy and justice are at the heart of the desire, then we must be merciful and just. Not your neighbor, not your family, not the government, but us. It is impossible to feel differently about a situation if we hang on to the old ideas, no matter how justifiable and satisfying that might seem. There is no justice if it does not include justice for all. How are you demonstrating kindness, unselfishness, and service to a higher purpose? Do you remember the parable of the wineskins in the Bible? It is recounted in the Gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke. In Matthew chapter 9, verse, 9, verse 17, it reads, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Parables are teaching stories that Jesus told in his day to awaken us to a recognition of higher possibilities, so that we could begin to see the good all around us, and begin to experience what peace and harmony, love and goodwill could feel like. And it's all about feeling your way into the experience. The parable of the wineskins is about changing your mind, inputting new ideas, so we can live in a world that works for everyone. Anyone ever made wine? Wine is created from fruit or vegetables, not just grapes, and it goes through a fermentation process, which allows the sugar content to be converted to alcohol. Now, this process can be a stinky, unruly affair as the transformation is taking place. It bubbles and hisses as gases are released and the contents expand. This can burst the container if you're not careful. The wineskins that are referred to in Jesus' day were made from sheep's stomach. And the old stomachs were not flexible enough to withstand the transformation, and they would burst. Hence, you use new skins for new wine, as these are more accommodating to the process. And so it is with transformation that takes place in our own lives. It can be a messy, messy business. Made more, made more so by, by resistance, resistance and inflexibility. Urban, Urban Seal, Seal, writing, writing in his book, book Live to Learn, has this, has this to say, and I quote, Grant, grant the creative power of your own thought, and you have, with one fell swoop, cut the ground from beneath all fears and anxieties, resentments and hates, and have at the same time established a basis for confidence and goodwill. You will feel buoyant and happy, confident and free. 
The parable continues to speak about trying to patch an old garment with new cloth, which is totally useless because the old cloth cannot sustain the new patch, and so it falls apart anyway. I invite you this week to take a closer look at those areas of your lives that are in need of some transformation, personally or taking a look at the bigger picture. You know what they are. How are you approaching the process? With fear and trepidation or with faith and a confident knowing that there is a power for good in the universe and you can use it? Are you trying desperately to patch that which has outlived its usefulness? Are you being open and receptive to new ways of thinking and being? Marcus Garvey has said, men who are in earnest are not afraid of consequences. In other words, if your heart is in the right place and your intentions are good, then there is nothing to fear. The whole energy of the infinite is supporting you, as it always has through all the cycles of your life, whether you knew it or not. You're still here, aren't you? <laughs> that should be proof enough. <laughs> say with me, I'll say it first, I am awake to my potential. and aware of the infinite possibilities awaiting my recognition, and aware of the infinite possibilities awaiting my recognition. Now, those of us who have been through any form of transformation, anybody here hasn't? <laughs> you may have noticed that the need for transformation is usually preceded by a feeling of discontent, or maybe just dissatisfaction. Now this, if it's not addressed, can quickly escalate to feelings of anger, guilt, hopelessness, depression, extreme anxiety, and even rage. And before you know it, you're sitting at the bottom of the rabbit hole, wondering how you got there and how the heck are you going to get out. But transformation cannot happen without participation. Since nothing happens to you that doesn't happen through you. And that requires more than simply recognizing the need for change. It is to have a clear image and purposeful determination towards a particular outcome. We must lose all thought of doubt or fear and permit a new pattern to surface, to come into view. Rest assured, if the time was not right for change, you would be quite happy and satisfied in the discontent. Think about that. You can think expansive thoughts before you have expansive results, though, and know that the minute you acknowledge that there is power you can use, you are powerfully magnetized to draw into your experience all that is required to live free of all conflict and anxiety. That goal is sure to be attained by all, by all who feel and know this indwelling power and presence. Say with me, I am backed by unlimited power. All seeming obstacles to the expression of my heart's desire are now dissolved. Did you know that the opposite of depression is expression? If you're holding it in or holding on to something or someone, you're denying the expression of the desired good. And that is sitting in the wings, waiting on the entrance queue. Life is a journey of revelation more so than discovery. As little by little, the light of awareness dawns in consciousness, more and more of the real you is revealed. You know, <clears throat> much as I keep saying that I'm not a morning person, my favorite time of day is waking up pre-dawn 
to birdsong and soft organza skies, hinting at rose tints and streaks of apricot, playing off trees still in silhouette. As the light increases, shapes of individual trees emerge from the shadows and each is recognized as its true nature. Then the familiar baby blue skies unfold, heralding a new day, each new moment overflowing with possibility and opportunities for expression. This expression is amplified through the recognition that our created genius is our true self. And all our experiences are merely reflections of the degree of our acceptance of this identification with divine presence. I'm going to say that again. This expression is amplified through the recognition that our created genius is our true self. And all our experiences are merely reflections of the degree of our acceptance of this identification with the divine presence. Wake up. Get up. Life awaits your special gifts and talents, your unique brand of spiritual awareness. Life withholds nothing, so why should we? You have to do life. You can't sit on the sidelines. Participation is key. So show up and get in the game. You make a mistake, try again. You fall down, get up and go again. You lose your way, get a mentor, a teacher, get a flashlight and keep going. Everything up until now has been preparing you for now. And everything from now on is preparing your next step and your next step ad infinitum. Say with me, I walk calmly through life, I walk calmly through life. knowing I am enveloped in the divine presence. I am a distributor of God power. I trust in the dawn. And so it is. Namaste. Namaste.